So today on the show, we have with us uh, Justin Erickson, the creative director of Phantom City Creative. And he's here today to talk about his new book, uh, Batman the Animated Series, the Phantom City Creative Collection. Thank you so much for joining us, Justin. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's a lot of, there's colons, there's two colons in that title. <laughs> it was uh, a tough one. <laughs> 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 Lots to cover. Excited to get into it. Yeah, it, it, one of the things was we didn't want to have the word series twice, like Batman made a series, Phantom City created a series. So it's like, how do you make word salad less word salad? <laughs> so could you tell us for a minute, like, why Batman? Did you grow up on the series, or why do you like Batman? Uh, when the show when the show first aired, I think I was at that sweet spot of like young young kid who was really into the character and co reading comic books every week, uh, like go to the local comic store on every like Thursday or Tuesday, I can't remember what day, and get all the new books. I wasn't really into Batman comics, but the show, uh, something about it just really grabbed me. That uh, impossible time frame. I'm a big fan, I've always been a big fan of like film noir and uh, like old movies. Mm. So it takes place in that type of time frame. And then it was just, like playing great stories told really well with great voice acting. And uh, I kind of forgot this series a bit until I was uh, an adult and Mondo approached me about doing a poster, just one. And I'm like, yeah, sure, cool, why not? <laughs> and I didn't think it would spawn to this like six, seven year series and now it's culminating in a book. I, hadn't, I there's no way of knowing that. But uh, we did the first poster and then it did really well, and they asked, do you want to do another one? I'm like, yeah, why not? Sure. Still not thinking this would be anything more than, like, maybe three posters. And now we're, like, 40 deep, I think. Wow, 40 posters. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So could you talk for a minute about uh, what does it mean to be a creative director of a publishing organization like this? Uh, for, we're not really publishing more a uh, key art firm where we do uh, po poster art for film and television, the odd music packaging. Uh, my role is uh, whenever a project comes in, uh, I'm more or less the guide of how it looks in the end. Um, whether I'm doing the work myself or we're hiring someone to do it, uh, like the, the last quality check is me and make sure it's, it, it meets the project's needs. Gotcha. So are you the one sitting there, you know, with the Adobe program or only some of the time? Are you okay things that other people have made or is that what it looks like? It's mostly me at the at the desk myself with the Adobe programs, be it Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever. And uh, if it's not me at the desk, I'm the one at the end who says yes or no. How would you describe the film noir artistic style? So what mm. makes up that style? It is equal parts mood and use of black. I think um, like film noir, it's in the name. Noir is black and French, so. The heavy use of shadow, the melodramatic lighting, um, even how you pose and light characters. Nothing is so uh, complacent and relaxed. Everything's very full of emotion and uh, not necessarily danger, but intrigue. Like heavy contrast, heavy on black and white, black versus white in the designs, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, nothing is subtle. It's all like artistically beautiful. When did you get into that style? Did, was that something you've been interested in from an early age or did that kind of develop? Yeah, I think, uh, I think always, because I remember just watching a lot of movies growing up, like my parents had all the movie channels. So it would just sit and surf on different movie channels and I'd eventually find the odd 1930s or 40s movie, then love it. And eventually then getting into comic art with artists like Mike Mignola who created Hellboy and he uses black like nobody else. So really becoming a fan of his and studying that. Gotcha. See, and who is the audience of this book? Is this for Batman super fans or is this for everyone? Is are the uninitiated welcome? Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna like stop anyone from getting into the book or the, the series. Um, the series aired back in the nineties and a lot of people that uh, I hear from are the ones like, like me who watch the show uh, back then, but they also just released the series on uh, like Blu-ray, and sorry, my Google Home's talking to me. 
Um, it's okay. I had like a construction truck outside my house beeping for about four minutes there. So I'm hoping that didn't get picked up. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear. Um, yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's equal parts, I think, people who watch the show when I watched it when I was a young man, a uh, younger man, and the people who are responding to it now because it is released on Blu-ray. Um, are any big names associated with the show aware of your book? Like, is Mark Hamill going to tweet about it anytime soon? He has. Not, not the book, but he's like, we did a, uh, the, second the, the second series gallery show a couple of years ago, and he did tweet a couple of the Joker posters I had done. Oh my god! Which was neat. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to happen. Then he, I logged on Twitter and I saw him posting my stuff. If you send us the links to those afterwards, we'll feature those as screenshots over the interview. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. I, think I have that screenshot somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll just Google it. You know, Mark Hamill, Phantom City Creative. But uh, yeah, so. I keep hearing about. Sorry, go on. Oh no, no, go ahead. And I keep hearing uh, like I've never met anyone from the show. Cause I don't do many conventions. I just, it's not many up in here in Canada. And then I just, it's a big hassle to travel to the States. And um, so I have friends who go to conventions and people who have the posters and go to conventions and see people like uh, the creator, Bruce Tim, other uh, voice actors, Kevin Conroy, who voiced Batman and they'll get stuff signed. And I'm like, you know, one day I have to meet these guys. Cause like, I imagine they've been given so many of my posters to sign and like, Oh, this guy again. <laughs> like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so next year, I'm guessing that maybe late, middle, late next year, comic conventions will start back up. Are you planning to use kind of that circuit or that marketing field to sell this book? Yeah, because there are like advertising online and in stores will grab some people, but uh, comic conventions and conventions in general uh, offer a very different. Uh, opportunity to move product like this or sell something because someone might see it online like oh, okay cool might get that later but if they see it in person they can pick it up and look at it and see all the colorful illustrations inside there there might be more inclined to pick it up that way so mm -hmm. it, it definitely is a way that we're going to sell the book the classic like picking up the book feeling it smelling it whole thing instead of just looking yeah 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 I, i've seen it happen so many times at conventions like people who i know for a fact have seen it online and passed and they walk by in person and go huh can I see that? Exactly. Yeah. Um, what does the process of having the idea for this book to getting it out on the internet ready for people to buy look like? Like, does it start with you having an idea in a boardroom or a board Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that, that was one. Not yet. a good That's pun. Good. Why nice. did you laugh? <laughs> you know, board, I, if, if that's a thing, I haven't heard it yet. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Eat that when we're done. Yeah. We're gonna like. Trademark that, make, 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 make a buck. Sure, put on t-shirts. Mm. Uh, I think that the, the idea has always kind of been there for a book, like years and years ago when we were past, I think the 15th, 20th poster, uh, Rob at Mondo, who had been working, like he, he's the guy that instigated this entire series in the first place. It was his idea. And uh, we're like, yeah, it'd be cool to do a book one day. Yeah, that'd be cool. That was it. That, that was like the only talk about it for a long, long, long time because there just wasn't enough to fill a book. It was like maybe a chapter in a book, but not a book itself. So when we got to a point where we thought we could actually fill the book, we went to each other and said, could this actually happen? Could we do this? So then they had a partner, they had a publishing partner that they spoke with and said, do we have this series, this artist who has all these posters? Are you interested in creating a book? And they said yes, because the property is like Batman is an evergreen property. People normally get tired of Batman, and uh, that's when it started. And they worked up the logistics and the legal, and then I worked out uh, like Rob and I were more into the creative end of the book itself, like deciding what the workflow is going to be like, uh, how to divide work, how much to show, and what new work to create for. Because people who have all the posters might not be that interested in getting the in the book because like if they've seen it all or have it all why would i buy that so we have also wanted to make something new for them and something special for them so there are posters that only exist in the book that, that won't be printed ever and some behind the scenes look like sketches and uh, process discussions did you in creating the art for this book like did you just 
compiles, did you plan what art was going to be there in advance or did you kind of just draw as you wanted to and then you put in the book what you felt was best out of what you've drawn? Like how much well, the main, was there? Yeah. It was more just like, well, the plotting, this is how it went. Uh, both the bulk of the series, the bulk of the book rather, is based on two different collections of posters, the first and second, because uh, they're based around uh, the the vinyl box of designs, which are also in the book. Mm. Um, it was mostly Mondo asking me, what do you want to do? Because mm. I knew the, the series better than they did. I had a pretty extensive knowledge of the series and episodes and uh, and what I wanted to do. So I gave him a list of episodes that I thought would be great first uh, set and great posters. And we went back and forth and picked different ones, same ones, and then, it was also based on, as you say, the availability of the soundtrack, because sometimes the soundtrack isn't available or they don't have the rights or they haven't quite cleared yet. So it was also based on that. And then for the second series, it was mostly the same uh, like process. We picked the episodes for the soundtrack collection and then uh, for the gallery show that went with it, we also picked some ones that didn't have to be a soundtrack that we just want to do a cool poster for. What message do you have for people who are intrigued by this interview and the concept of this book, but maybe aren't going to buy it? Like, what's the thing that you're going to say that will push them over the edge? Hmm. Well, it's hard to find someone who's not a fan of Batman. Mm. No. Um, you know. Well, everyone likes Christian Bale. <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I sure do. Yeah. Um, well, I'd say that the show was made with love and the art post, the posters that I made were made of love for the show. So even if you don't pick up the book necessarily, give it a, give it a chance, give it a read through. Uh, you might find something in there that you can identify with. Uh, I go at length about some of the processes I go at, went through to make it. And we have a really great intro from one of the co-creators of the show, Paul Didi. He goes into the show's creation and what it means to him. And uh, yeah. yeah. Getting inside creators' heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if like, I, I love art books because it gives you a chance to read something and learn something about a, a property. Even if I don't necessarily like the movie, I might pick up the art book just to get an idea of how it was created. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We're so grateful to have you. Uh, oh, thanks so much. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. And uh, people can buy the book or pre-order the book at the link in the description. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.